then they just eat it, you know, for their own sense gratification. And that's it. But when you do that, you have to accept the karma that comes along with that food. And if you're eating animal food, for example, that means you have to accept the karma of killing the animal. It doesn't matter that you personally didn't kill the animal, because by paying for the food at the store, you basically hired somebody to kill the animal for you. So you have to accept a, a certain amount of that karma. Not all of it, certainly, but a, a good percentage of the, the karma of killing the animal because you hired somebody else to kill the animal. Does that make sense? Just like, uh, you know, when there's a, a gangland killing, they hire some hitman to go after somebody. Uh, both the person who does the killing and the person who hires him are both guilty in the court, and they both get a similar punishment. So in the same way, according to the law of karma, when we eat animal food that's been killed for us by somebody else, we have to accept the karma for that act of killing. Uh, now, let's look at a different scenario. Let's look at a devotee of the Lord who prepares some nice food to eat. And first of all, they're going to prepare vegetarian food because we don't believe in killing animals. The, the next thing we're going to do is offer that food to the Lord. My dear Lord, I cook this nice prasadam just for you. Please have some. Uh, then the Lord, he simply glances over that food. He doesn't have to physically eat it. <laughs> his senses aren't like our senses. Our senses right now are material, but his senses are transcendental. But we also have transcendental senses, but in most people, they're kind of uh, in a state of suspended animation. <laughs> um, they're asleep, in other words. But uh, the Lord's never asleep. He's always awake to his real spiritual identity. So when we offer food to him, he can eat simply by glancing at the food. See, any of his senses can perform the actions of any of his other senses. So he can eat by glancing, he can touch by hearing, uh, he can taste by smelling. <laughs> he is completely transcendental. So uh, any of his senses can perform the action of any of the other senses. That's one of the natural attributes of spiritual beings. So when the Lord accepts our offering, it's, it's not that he needs us to eat. You know, he's not going to starve to death <laughs> if we don't offer him food. But really, he accepts the love and devotion with which we offer it. So when the Lord accepts the food, he also nullifies the karma because the food has been offered in sacrifice. So it's not that the food disappears. Huh? It's that he accepts it by glancing at it and in doing that, he takes away the karma. So when we eat that food, we don't have to suffer the karma that we would normally have to accept if, uh, for killing the plants uh, or you know, if, the, if the plants are mistreated or if money from the food is misspent on material sense gratification or something like that. So in this way, we are excused or released from the karma involved in taking food. That is a form of karma yoga. It means we take our karma and we link it with the Supreme Lord by a process of sacrifice. And when we do that, we're released from that karmic reaction and we don't have to suffer because of it. Now let's use another example. Let's say a person works very hard at their job and they get so much money as a salary then if they take that money and they spend it on their own sense gratification, guess what? They have to take the karma of everything that happens with that money. You know, let's say they, they go to um, a furniture store and they buy a table and then they bring that table home and they eat and all that kind of thing on using the table. But let's say the guy at the furniture store takes their money then goes out and buys liquor or drugs or something like that, or simply um, uses it to maintain his material family. Well, all that generates karma, and because you gave him the money for doing that, you have to accept a portion of that sinful reaction. However, if we take that same table and we offer it to the Lord uh, for use, let's say, as an altar, 
or if we use it for serving the prasadam after it's, after it's been offered to the Lord, uh, then that table becomes linked with the Lord because we're using it in his service. Do you follow? It's the same table. We're even using it for the same purpose. But because we're engaging that table in the process of sacrifice to the Lord, the karma that we would normally have to get from purchasing that table from some rascal at the furniture store is nullified, is taken away. Uh, so we don't have to suffer that karma. Why is that important? Because uh, the law of karma is what keeps us in this material world. Uh, when consciousness contacts material things, the result is suffering because spiritual things and material things are completely different in quality. Our consciousness is the symptom of our spiritual nature as a soul, as a living entity, a jiva. And because our consciousness is a symptom of a spiritual entity, consciousness is also spiritual in quality. Huh? Spiritual entities have spiritual qualities, just like material things have material qualities. So, when our consciousness, which is a spiritual quality, contacts matter, the result is pain, suffering. Because, why? Matter and spirit are completely different. They're incompatible, they're inharmonious. Just like water and oil, they never really mix. Huh? We never really become denizens or inhabitants of this material world. The soul is never actually affected by the material energy. But because we think, we identify with this material body and we think this is myself, therefore we have to suffer because the body is constantly changing, it's subject to all kinds of conditions in the material world, sometimes it gets sick, uh, we always have to feed it, we have to do so many things to take care of it, maintain it, give it a house and so on. Uh, a lot of suffering involved in taking a body. But when we engage our consciousness in things that are purely spiritual, we automatically get pleasure from that because the consciousness is being engaged in something of the same quality. Uh, it's just like a fish. If you take a fish out of the water, uh, you can dress him up, give him all kinds of money, set him on the throne, worship him as a king. <laughs> but is the fish going to be happy? No, because he's out of his element. To make the fish happy, we have to put him back in the water. So similarly, the spirit soul, his natural element is the spiritual world. When we take the spirit soul out of the spiritual world and put him in this material world, he suffers. Why? Because he's out of his element. He's out of his natural habitat. But uh, even if we give the spirit soul so much money and dress him up in nice clothes and make him a king and do all these nice things, he's still not going to be happy. Uh, look at Britney Spears. <laughs> I mean, she's got everything, right? She's like young, beautiful, has $150 million in the bank, and she's miserable. <laughs> Poor baby. Huh? She doesn't know any of this about spiritual life. So she's suffering like anything. And, and then she's freaking out because she can't understand. Why am I suffering? I have it all. I should be enjoying like anything, but I'm miserable. Why? Huh? So it's driving her crazy. <laughs> she's why going psychotic. Huh? Because when someone gets what they think is going to make them happy, and then it doesn't make them happy, that's freak out time. <laughs> Ooh, I got a million dollars. I won the lottery. Now I have to pay 60% taxes. Oh. <laughs> that's the material world for you. Always some unintended result that we didn't think was going to happen comes up and bites us, huh? Because <laughs> we don't understand this law of karma. Karma means if I do something for my satisfaction, if I do some work for my benefit, then I have to take the result. I mean, it's kind of obvious, huh? 
Like if I go to the office and work, then when pay, pay uh, time comes, I get the money. See, I did the work, I get the result. The thing that we don't understand is that besides the ordinary material or gross result of every action, there's also a subtle result, which is called karma. Huh? For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So for everything that we do to try to enjoy, in the future we have to suffer. See? And the suffering is there even if we do so-called good works, like give charity or something like that. Uh, if we give charity, that's considered in the mode of goodness, if we do it in the right way. But even charity given in the mode of goodness still obligates us to take a material body to uh, receive the result of that work. So we have to suffer, because taking a material body always involves suffering. 